Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are going to do our full entire July garden tour, and I couldn't be more excited to share it with you today because things have really started to take off. <laughs> Last time we did a full garden tour, I was out there and I feel like I was just like so stressed and worried about everything, and it's amazing what a few weeks can do to really have things explode and take off. First thing, the green stalks are looking fantastic. These both have different beans in them and they have just exploded. You can see the first baby beans we have in the garden are on the green stalk. And the thing is about these green stalks is they have about four or five different varieties of beans on them. So I'm not exactly sure even, oh, it looks like a couple of these leaves need to come off. I have been fertilizing them once a week with fish emulsion and they really are thriving. These beans at the top here are doing the best. I'm pretty sure they're jade bush beans at the top, but quite honestly, it's a whole jumble of a bunch of different things. Everything I planted in here can be eaten as soft, tender green beans, but there are some drying beans on here too. These snapdragons are looking fantastic. And these wave petunias are looking really well too. So next year when I plant out an entire green stalk in petunias, like I have here, I am gonna make sure that I use the wave petunia variety because I think they would fill this out a little bit better. These are doing really well. They, this could be the reason they haven't kind of exploded. I mean, they have exploded, it looks beautiful, but exploded as much as the ones in that green stalk is these were pretty root bound when I bought them and pretty stunted, I think. So they are looking really great, but I think I have learned next year I wanna try doing a different variety of petunias because I want another petunia green stock because the hummingbirds, I seriously watch hummingbirds all day, every day on this green stock. And then over here we have our nasturtium green stock and it is about done. So I think sometime this week I'm gonna come, I'm gonna take all of these nasturtiums off and we're gonna restart something new in this green stock. It was absolutely beautiful when it was thriving. The hummingbirds are still enjoying these flowers. So I've also thought that I might be able to cut some of this kind of dead foliage off and see if it would start regrowing from the center because you can see that new growth is really green. Maybe I should try that first. And I think I'm gonna harvest the seeds this year and see if we can save seed and grow more nasturtiums from seed we saved. And then over here, I wanted to show you this. These are the elderberries and they're looking really, really good. But what's looking fantastic are the eucalyptus. So I'm really excited about how the eucalyptus is going. I am going to try to overwinter this eucalyptus. Once these side shoots get really big, I'm gonna start harvesting these and I want to bring these inside and enjoy them all winter long. I went to the farmer's market, not last weekend, but the weekend before, and I was talking to a man who owns a greenhouse, and he was saying that eucalyptus overwinters here really well, as long as we tend to have about one or two weeks of really, really cold. He usually goes out and covers it in plastic for about one or two weeks, and then it does really well. So I'm gonna try to do that. The rhubarb has really taken off. These rhubarb plants, when I put them in the ground, were about yay big. And I have four of them and they're doing really well. These are the fig plants that we took from the last homestead. They're doing really well. I do need to water them. They are not on the irrigation system, but I wanted to show you another view of these green stalks. Now let's get into the main garden where things are really, really taking off. I, I, every year I'm a gardener and every year I plant, I am so stressed that nothing I plant is going to produce or grow. And with your guys' tips and tricks and some time and patience, things are starting to explode. So last time I was out here, I was saying everything looked stunted. I felt like there was a nutrient deficiency. There wasn't enough nitrogen in the ground. And I came out here with you and we put, what was it? Fish emulsion down. Yes, fish emulsion. My neighbor's cow is mooing, so it's distracting me. And you guys had mentioned in that video when we did that together that that takes time. It takes about a month for the rain and the irrigation to really get that into the soil. So what I needed to do to jumpstart my plants was to get some liquid fertilizer on them. So I took my Neptune's harvest and I fertilized each one of my plants that I was stressed out about, and they are doing a whole lot better. 
there's four fighter jets. Two of them have already gone behind this tree, but there's one there, one there, and then a couple behind here. We will wait for those fighter jets to pass before we continue on this garden harvest. I'm just so thrilled with what is happening here. All right, we're gonna get back at it. So down here, let's start down here and we'll work our way up and over. So down here, we've got our potato bed. I've already harvested one of the potato plants and we got a pretty good harvest, but I'm gonna let the rest of them hang out in here until they die back. I've got two of Sunflower Steve's sunflowers, or actually I have three of them in here. And these were not meant to be planted in here, but what happened, is I took the seed cells that didn't have anything germinate in them and I threw it in here because I didn't want to waste it. And then they must have liked this environment a little bit better and they sprouted. So that's really fun to watch. We're just going to see what we get out of those sunflowers there. We're going to let them hang out in the potato bed. Now this next bed is one that I had so much anxiety about because these plants after they sprouted looked absolutely horrible. But you can see now they have bounced back. They are green and lush and they all have started to flower those purple flowers and oh my goodness okay so they not only have flowered but they're starting to produce beans. Now what this bed is this entire bed is black beans from seed that I had saved and planted out here. Last year we got a zero black bean harvest because the deer kept eating them. And this year I was convinced with how the plants were looking that they were just gonna not produce anything. But as long as it continues on this trend, that liquid fertilizer that I put on here, I did two rounds of liquid fertilizer and then I put that blood, oh, it's not fish meal. I think I said that earlier, it was blood meal down. And I think that blood meal is kind of acting as a slow release fertilizer and these plants are lush and beautiful. Quite honestly, I think that this could be a year's worth of black beans for Josh and I. They're planted very, very heavily in here and they're all looking just fantastic. The peas along the back edge have not gotten very tall, but they are producing a ton of peas. We are eating our weight in peas. There is no lack of these snow peas. They are so good, so sweet. And even though it's mid-July, they're still producing like crazy. Let's get into this bed here. This was another one I was a little stressed about because it took forever for these cucumbers to start growing. And now you can see that is a little bitty cucumber on there. They have started growing. I've kind of got them on the trellis here. The zinnias are starting to bloom. But these zucchini plants were looking really bad and a lot of the plants weren't getting pollinated. And I've got a couple theories. This one still doesn't look that great, but the rest of them are looking pretty good. And part of the reason they weren't getting pollinated, here is an example of one that wasn't pollinated, is there is a lot of ants in this bed. And when I did a bunch of research, and in the garden tour, when we were talking last time in June, you all had mentioned that ants are not going to harm the plants themselves. But with the amount of ants that I had in these beds, what was happening is because there's so many ants, the pollinators don't necessarily want to hang out in the flower and do their job pollinating if the ants are in there. So I've been hand pollinating and they have started to take off. I am getting so many squash and they are doing really well. The sunflowers are starting to pop up as well. The zinnias are starting to bloom. The sunflowers I have all in here. And then here I plan to harvest the zucchini today or tomorrow and we're gonna make some zucchini bread out of it. And the cilantro has started to grow a little bit more. So I'm gonna harvest some of that probably for some salads. And this is something I'm loving too. This is my baby boo pumpkin and some of them are starting to set fruit. So these are little white pumpkins that I'm going to decorate this fall with. How you hand pollinate is you take a male flower, which is one of these that doesn't have the fruit attached to it. And what I do is I just open up the flower. I take the petals off. You can see the ants on there, which is gross. Then I find a female flower, which is this one because it has the fruit attached to it. So the way I remember this is women carry the babies. And so you know that the baby fruit is the female flower and the male one has no 
baby zucchini attached to it. So then what we do is we open up, oh, it looks like I already pollinated this one yesterday. So this is just an example then. So then we open up the flower and we take the pollen from the male fruit and we go ahead, this one's already been pollinated. And I just open up the flower and then I make sure I get the pollen all over the female flower and that's gonna pollinate this zucchini. Now this variety of zucchini is a golden glory zucchini and I am not liking it as much. The skin is pretty tough and I don't know if these ones are, I hand pollinated this one and it feels like the skin's a little bit softer so when they grow I'm curious to see how I'm gonna like it but this seems super tough as opposed to, this is a yellow zucchini here and it's a lot softer. So this one I'm gonna harvest probably today because it's gonna get really big and I'm gonna have a ton of them in the next couple days and we'll have this for dinner probably tonight. And here you can see there is another baby boo little pumpkin there. I'm hoping to get a ton of those to decorate this fall with those. This is the first year I've ever hand pollinated anything and it seems to be helping, but I've never also had a ant issue in my garden and I've been doing hand pollination when we get over to all the winter squash. I'm gonna show you all the stuff I've been hand pollinating. It is one of my new favorite things to do in the morning. Is come out here with the baby and see what female flowers have bloomed, what male flowers have bloomed, and see what we can hand pollinate. It almost makes me feel more invested. <laughs> like I was part of the conception of the vegetables, which might be a little weird, but it feels like I am more, it's a, it feels intimate, like I'm more connected with my garden. I don't know, I don't know, that might be weird, but I really enjoy hand pollinating my summer and winter squash. Now this bed here has a bunch of peppers and tomatoes in the back. I really need to get out and start trellising and tying up my tomato plants because they're starting to get unruly. I'll show you more as we go down the garden, but what I am so happy about is my pepper plants were looking awful until I fertilized them. They've started to green up and they are starting to produce a ton of fruit. These plants are King of the North pepper plants. Excuse me, these are not King of the North. These are King Arthur. They are a hybrid from Johnny Seeds and they are producing like crazy. The plants are still bouncing back, but it's still young in the season. We typically don't have a frost until October, so I hope that they give us a couple rounds of these beautiful peppers. Now, these are some black beans that were gifted to me in my P.O. box, and these are taking a little bit longer to bounce back. This is what the black beans look like in the bed that I showed you earlier, and after the fertilization, they bounce back, so I'm hoping that these ones start to bounce back pretty soon. Here is our Tabasco pepper, and I'm gonna grab that weed because there is a weed in there. So these tomatoes are starting to produce quite a bit. Those are the first ones to produce. So it looks like I need to come out and pick those. Lettuce, we have had as much lettuce as Josh and I can consume out of just this little, there's a weed there, lettuce strip here. I do have some more lettuce planted in another area for a second succession, but we have been eating our weight in lettuce as well. So now let's go over to this bed here. This is another pepper and tomato bed. My snapdragons here have been producing like crazy. I've been harvesting them. They give me about a week of vase life. So once I harvest them, I can keep them inside for about a week before I need to come out and replace them. So I'll probably come out later today and snap this white one off. Now these peppers are supposed to be King of the North peppers. And I think that I mixed up my peppers because here's a pepper plant here and you can see the fruit is growing down versus over here, the fruit is growing up. I think the fruit that's growing up like this, I'm pretty sure this is a Marconi pepper and this is a bell pepper back here. I think I mixed up my pepper plants when I was planting them, which absolutely could be the case. Now the tomatoes back here are looking really good. I do need to start tying them up because they're getting a little unruly just like the other bed but that is a theme i will get out here and i will start to tie them up but they are starting to set quite a bit of fruit there are tomato plants i need to come out here and prune them as well i am not a heavy heavy pruner but i need to kind of make them 
this is a mess. <laughs> so I need to kind of get them going up on the trellis and prune off some of the suckers and kind of get that looking a little bit better. So from this bed, we're gonna go down here. We've got some cabbages. These cabbages were put into the ground pretty late in the season and they definitely need to be harvested. We didn't have rain for about a month and a half and then it rained heavily two days ago and so they're starting to split. So I need to come out here today and harvest this cabbage and this needs to be eaten right away. This one still is intact so I can harvest this one and keep it in the fridge for a while. We'll get this one harvested. The red cabbage is just starting to head up. These are some cauliflower that need to come out. We had planted, we came out here and took out all of the cauliflower here in this bed. This was an entire cauliflower bed. We harvested the cauliflower, we took these up, and then I planted another succession of Blue Lake bush beans, and these beans are growing fantastic. I amended this bed with some fresh compost and some horse manure, and these beans right from the get-go are looking great. I didn't put any fertilizer down. Oh, I did put some blood meal when I amended the beds and it seems to have done the trick. So I'm gonna do that to all the beds. I also planted carrots and we have tons of carrots starting to come up, which is fantastic, all the green. These here are another succession of sunflowers. And then I did one more succession of pinto beans and you can see I did not have very good germination on these pinto beans. So I'm gonna come out here and reseed more pinto beans and see if we can get some more to grow. Now along the back side of this bed, I have cilantro and I had totally given up on the cilantro, but it has started to bounce back. So today I think I'm gonna come and harvest a bunch of it and try to get some in the freeze dryer. These cucumbers have been out here for two months and they're doing nothing. So I probably should reseed new cucumbers here because those are not gonna get to any size, I don't think at any point anytime soon. From this bed, we're gonna come down to this bed here, and I have already been able to harvest tomatoes off these tomato plants. These are the indeterminate varieties of tomatoes, so they only grow kind of like a bush size, and they grow in cages. These are all Roma tomatoes, except for I found one over here that is not a Roma tomato, and this one must just got mixed up in tomatoes as I was planting them because you can see it is viney. And so this is an indeterminate variety. And this tomato plant is putting on what looks like a slicing tomato, not aroma tomato, but you can see these Roma tomato plants are just absolutely loaded with fruit and flowers. So Roma tomato plants and determinate varieties of tomato plants, they put on one really, really heavy set of fruit they ripen that fruit and then it is done for the year. Versus the other tomato plants that I have at the top of the garden, along the whole outside edge on those really big trellises, all the way down to there, are my indeterminate varieties of tomato plants. So those ones vine and grow and continue to grow and they don't do well in tomato cages. So this one in this tomato cage isn't gonna be super happy, but it is what it is and we're just gonna let it grow and hopefully we get some fruit off of it. Now, one thing that's really exciting that is just starting to happen is in amongst the Roma tomatoes, I planted jade green beans and they are just starting to set some flowers. So hopefully we'll get some jade green beans here pretty soon. Now, these tomato plants, I need to come in here and prune them because there's very little airflow that's happening in there. And so I need to get in here and clean this up a little bit. But what I'm gonna do with these when I prune them is I'm only gonna prune the foliage. I'm not gonna prune any suckers because I want all of the fruit producing branches to happen because they are a bush variety and they aren't a vine. They're not gonna continue to keep putting on flowers forever and ever through the growing season. They're only gonna do this one big push. And so I wanna keep all of the blossoms intact, but I do need to get some airflow in there and just let the plant breathe a little bit. Now we live in a very dry climate in the winter. Pacific Northwest has this wrap of being really wet and gloomy, but it really only rains in the spring and fall and winter. It does not rain in the summer. We're very, very dry in the summer. So I don't have to worry about disease so much with my tomato plants, but I do want a little bit more airflow in there. So 
I'm gonna come out here at some point and get those kind of cleaned up a little bit. Now this here is a little bit of a flop this year. I've had some years where celery has done really well and some years where it's done poorly. This year it's doing kind of poorly. I have fertilized it with some fish emulsion, but it's just not really growing and it has some aphids on it. So I need to get out here with some soapy water and get the aphids off, but these just aren't doing well. So I think the black plastic might be too warm for the celery. So I'm gonna kind of chalk this up to maybe next year, I'm not gonna put the celery in the black plastic. I'll put it in a bed that doesn't have any plastic to keep the plants a little bit cooler. Now this plant looks pretty good. Some of them look okay. Some of them look pretty, pretty sad, but that's okay because this bed looks absolutely fantastic. This was my goal here of having my winter squash grow out the beds and it is fulfilling that job beautifully. Now on the end of this bed, I thought that I was planting white pumpkins, but I didn't realize I was planting white zucchini. These zucchinis are so delicious. They're probably one of our favorite, new favorites. I'd never grown this before. We absolutely love them. I'm gonna come out and harvest that one today. We'll probably have that for dinner tonight. And I've been hand pollinating these as well. So I need to come out here and prune these plants. But these winter squash are doing their job. They are vining out. This plant right here is my fairy tale pumpkin and it's just starting to set some fruit. I hand pollinated this pumpkin, I think like four or five days ago and it has just exploded. So I'm excited to see what this looks like throughout the growing season. And all of them have just started growing beautifully. I've got my zinnias growing here at the top. And so those are kind of poking out. That's exactly what I wanted. And that's been really fun. So I have just different color zinnias in here. This one has not bloomed yet. And that's really fun. Now over here, I have my largest pumpkin that's growing so far. And this is a Cinderella pumpkin. I'm excited to see what this has in store for us. This has only been growing for about a week and it's already that big so i think this has the potential to get really large we've got a couple we've got one there i pollinated last week and then this one i might have to come out here later today and pollinate later once that flower opens up a little bit or you know what let's go ahead maybe let's do it right now you're a part of this garden just as much as me so let's make a pumpkin This is gonna be really fun because now we can watch this pumpkin grow together and we can see how far along that pumpkin comes. Winter squash, pumpkins, and things like that are probably my most favorite things to grow. So that's gonna be fun to watch that. Now over here we have our chamomile. I've been harvesting on this as it's ready. It's ready today, I can harvest off of it. This right here is our stock. This is some flowers we started from seed this winter. This is a cool weather flower and you can see it's starting to go to seed. So I'm gonna let this go to seed and I'm gonna harvest the seed and we will maybe try to grow some of that next year after we harvest the seed. Now from our winter squash pumpkin, we can come over here. This is a potato bed. It really just has potatoes and some onions along the outside. They're doing really well. These potatoes are about to flower and then once they die back, we'll harvest them. So I'm excited about that. And then over here, we've got some straw flowers that I've been harvesting. I harvest about a bouquet every couple days. We have our Rebecca. We started this from seed. This is a perennial, so it'll come back every year. And I've been harvesting our eucalyptus here to put in bouquets. Now this bed has done really, really well just from the get-go. These pepper plants have always looked really well. These are some pepper plants that I got at Home Depot. And I fertilized these beds right away because I knew that I was having issues with those plants. And these ones are looking really well. These are Anaheim hot peppers. So I could start harvesting some of those green. Down here, we have some cucumbers. These cucumbers look better than the ones I have over there. They're probably twice the size and they've been in the ground half the time. I have a second round of zucchini plants. This is a 
squash plant. This is a zucchini plant. We have more cucumbers. I mean, look at the size of this cucumber plant compared to that one I showed you over by the trellis. It's just amazing what amending the soil before you plant. These are from seed and they look really, really great. These are market more cucumbers. We've got some more peppers back here that I got at Home Depot on sale. These are giant Marconis. And you know what, those must not be Marconis up there that were growing straight up because these ones are growing down. So anyway, they look really, really good. And then the onions are starting to bounce back. I had very little faith in the onions and these ones are looking really nice. I've been harvesting the greens and we've been eating the greens like green onions a ton. I have a bunch of basil plants in here. That is a weed, I wanna get that weed. And we've been harvesting the basil and I've been freeze drying the basil as much as I can for winter use. So from there, we've got a bunch of peas in the back. Those are doing really well. We eat our weight in peas. We've got some more straw flowers here. You can see I took the head off this one because I brought it in for a bouquet. This is a really deep purple color. This is a white straw flower. And then we have another Rebecca here. Now up here, I planted carrots and those are starting to germinate. So that's really exciting. Our parsley is looking really good. These cabbages I need to harvest because they are ready to harvest. They look absolutely beautiful. Those are not quite ready to harvest. Up here, we've got more tomatoes and peppers that are looking really good. Our jalapenos are small, but I've got a ton of them on the plants. Just absolutely a ton of them but they are small. More tomatoes, the tomatoes are looking really nice. The jalapenos are looking fantastic. I have been harvesting jalapenos a ton. I do not need to buy any jalapenos anytime soon and I'm hoping to let a lot of these jalapenos turn red. So I'll leave them on the vine or I'll leave them on the plant until they fully ripen. And I really need to make some more sriracha sauce. I didn't make it last year made it two years ago and I just ran out of it this week. So I need to get some more homemade sriracha sauce in my pantry and it's made with red jalapenos. I planted some cannellini beans and some of them didn't have the best germination. Some of them are a little bit small, but we'll just see what happens with those. From there over here, these tomatoes really need some serious attention. Oh look, there's a bumblebee. I love seeing that. And then we've got more pepper plants. The cabbage, or not cabbage, the kale is getting a little bit too toasty with the black fabric, but that's okay. We've got a lot of kale. These are our Chinese five color peppers. So this is the first color they produce are these beautiful, are these beautiful purple peppers. And then they turn orange, red, beige, yellow, and it's just really cool because they have all five colors. And it's really cool when the plant has all five colors on it at one time. These are our poblano peppers. And these plants are starting to really take off. We're getting a ton of fruit. So this is really encouraging. Tomatoes are looking fantastic. Now from this bed, let's come down here. Now this bed is really fun. Our calendula just started blooming yesterday. And then we've got some eucalyptus here. These are our Kajari melons. We've got more calendula and zinnias and another really big bushy zinnia plant. And then in here, I've got kale that goes along the entire bed. That's why I'm not worried about that kale up there because we have a ton and ton of kale. We can eat as much kale as we want. And then here, these plants are all pumpkins of some sort. That one is starting to set fruit right there. I think that's a sweet meat, but the thing with these pumpkins is I don't know what they are. These plants sprouted up on the deck in one of my pot flower pots and I transplanted them down here. The reason there was pumpkin seeds in those pots is because the four inch pots that I didn't have my pumpkin sprout was in some really nice compost. I didn't want that compost to go to waste, so I put it in my flower pots. And then these plants liked those pots, so they germinated and I didn't want them growing in the pots, so I 
dug them up and I put them here, but I don't know what they are. So this is gonna be a fun thing to watch over the growing season to see what we get. This is a Brussels sprout plant. I had one, so I just stuck it there. We'll see how it does. But I think that's a sweet meat, but only time will tell. And then I do have some melons here. These are some melons I got just online that I ordered. They're starting to vine out, so we'll see if we get any melons. I've never grown melons before, so that's gonna be a fun experiment. I have four of those plants. This bed here is something I am so incredibly proud and excited about. I have never, and I mean never, have I ever grown corn that is this tall. It was knee high by July 1st, and I am so excited about the possibility of possibly harvesting corn on this homestead. Really exciting. On the edge here, we have these beautiful zinnias. I've been harvesting these every couple days to bring inside. And one thing that I'm so excited about is our pinto bean experiment. We planted these pinto beans around the corn that were just beans that I had bought at Walmart a couple of years ago, and they are starting to flower. So this is crazy. So we might get a pinto bean harvest from the pinto beans that are gonna be growing around the corn. There's some back there. Some of them didn't germinate, like these don't have any pinto beans around them, but some of them have a couple. Any harvest we get from those pinto beans, I'm considering completely free food because I bought those pinto beans two years ago or three years ago. They've been sitting in my pantry, didn't expect anything to happen, and they have germinated, which is awesome. Now, traditionally, you would plant pole beans, which are beans that are gonna grow up a stalk of something. So for a Three Sisters garden, you would plant pole beans around corn so it can vine up around the corn. I didn't know if those pinto beans were pole beans or bush beans. I think they're bush beans because I guess pinto beans can come in both types. So I just planted them, see what happens, and they have sprouted. Now on the edge of this corn bed, there are two fairy tale pumpkins. Now this plant doesn't have any fruit on it yet. I haven't seen one female flower on it yet. I've seen a few male flowers bloom, but this one over here has one that has been pollinated. I hand pollinated this one. This is a fairy tale pumpkin and I'm hoping that we get a few more. So something that's interesting here as well is I have two nasturtium plants. I don't know why this one is doing so much better than that one, but that's something that I've noticed that sometimes one of them in particularly will be doing really well and one is a little stunted, but I am just grateful for how beautiful this corn, bean, and pumpkin bed is looking. Now from here, We've got this bed here. This is a really, really fun bed that has been kind of an experiment as well. Overall, we've got a ton of onions in this bed. That was what this bed started out as. And then I put in a couple squash plants. I don't know what kind of squash these are. I think that's a butternut squash. And this one, I don't know. I'm looking at that little female pumpkin there and I don't know, don't recognize the shape of it. So we'll see what it is. And then as an experiment, I put in carrots and the carrots are thriving in this bed. And then along the outside, I planted a ton of sunflowers. So that is gonna be really beautiful when that blooms. Last time we were in this bed together talking about these cosmos, I was worried because they hadn't done anything, but now they have bounced back and they're looking really great. So from this one onion bed, we can go to our other onion bed, which is over here. This bed is almost identical to the other bed in that it's mostly onions. And then we have carrots in between the onions. Over here, I've got a squash plant and I don't know what kind of squash plant this is, but this squash plant here is one of these Italian white, I think it's an Italian white. And this by far is our favorite zucchini style squash so far this year. And then I do have big sunflowers along the back side. Now these were the onions that when I purchased, they were moldy and I had very little faith in them, but look at these carrots. These carrots are looking fantastic. I had basically given up on getting any sort of onion crop, but I think the onions are bouncing back with the fertilizer and we'll see. I mean, 
once I give up on like mentally, I'm not as emotionally attached to these onions anymore. So I'm going to be excited for any harvest we get. And I still plan to purchase some onions from my local farmer that I bought from last year. But you know, maybe they're going to do something, but this plant is looking fantastic. I think as long as it continues to look this good, we will get a harvest off this Jardel pumpkins plant. Look at this beauty. Now, I thought this was a Jardel plant. This squash is not looking like a Jardel pumpkin. It looks more like a sweet meat. So time will tell if I know exactly what type of squash this is, but we've got one really large fruit on here. And then I just saw another female flower there. So I will hand pollinate this some point when that flower opens. So here we have some more lettuce and this is a failure. <laughs> These cabbages I planted are starting to flower. I'm, they're opening up. I've never seen a cabbage flower before. So we might just let them go and we'll just see what happens. Maybe we'll just let the pollinators enjoy them. The red cabbage though is looking really good. It's starting to grow. Now over here, I have not harvested anything off this plant yet. This is a striped zucchini plant. So we will see, there is evidence of me pollinating that one. We will see what this looks like or tastes like once we harvest it. So that's kind of fun. So this bed is doing overall pretty good, harvesting a ton, a ton of Oregon snow peas. As many as we want right now, we can harvest a ton. I think the reason these ones are so yellow down here I don't know if those ones are getting watered. I don't know if these sprinklers are hitting them and that's why they're yellowing. Honestly though, I'm not worried about them not doing so well because we are getting an abundance of snow peas. If those few plants don't produce, it'll be okay. Now we have this bed. The zinnias are starting to bloom here. Now there, I think this is a fungal disease. I'm not worried about it because these are just for my own enjoyment. If I was trying to be a flower farm, I would be really worried about that, but I'm not worried about it. Here are some more melons that are starting to take off. These are melons. I have a second succession right here of radishes. I think I'm gonna harvest all of them here in a day or two. And I think I'm gonna pickle them. These radishes actually have done a lot better than the first set of radishes I harvest or I planted. And these onions are starting to bulb up, which is pretty exciting. More radishes. Here, right here, here, here and here, there and there, there and there. These are the plants that I started in a Ziploc bag and planted out. They're a banana squash and, a, oh, this must be the banana squash because that is a female flower right there. They're a pink squash that gets huge. I've never grown them. I've always wanted to grow them. So I'm excited about that. So clearly pre-sprouting the squash in the Ziploc bag has worked really well. This is a sweet meat right here. You can see a little baby female flower there. But what the real star of the show in this bed currently are these two plants here, here and here. These are Atlantic giant pumpkin and I've got a ton of them on here. These are all been hand pollinated. I think you only want a couple per plant because they get so large and you want the energy going into just a couple fruits, but I couldn't help myself and we're gonna get a bunch of these pumpkins. This one's a little funny shaped here, but you can see the size difference of these Atlantic giant pumpkins versus these ones so far. Now these ones were started probably two weeks before those ones, but still that's a huge difference in size. This Atlantic giant pumpkin holds the record for being the largest pumpkin in the world. I think it was like 2,400 pounds or something like that. So if I get a 50 pound pumpkin, I'm gonna be pretty impressed with myself. And so we're gonna go up to this bed here this bed has quite a few things in it as well, and some stuff I've already been harvesting off quite a bit from. We're gonna come from this bed to this bed, and I'm not exactly sure why some of the nasturtiums in this garden have done really well, and some have just kapooped. This one completely died, so I don't know if a bug got to its roots or it's just not happy in this bed, I don't know, but that is something that has died, but we've got some really cool things happening in this bed. 
Now one of, I feel like the hardiest pepper plants I've ever grown, they produce so much fruit and they just seem to thrive, are these sugar rush peach peppers. I mean, look at how many peppers are on this one plant alone and there are tons more flowers on it. It's just incredible. Now these do need to green up a little bit. I have fertilized them. I fertilized these bean plants. These are contender green beans and you can see the new growth is a lot greener than these outside leaves. So these are gonna bounce back, but even with these plants kind of being a little bit yellowy, they are still producing so many flowers. These are contender green beans, which in the past have been my favorite green bean. Like this one has greened up a ton from the fertilizer. This one still needs a little bit of help. We've got a ton here of cayenne peppers plants and the cayenne peppers have put on a ton of fruit as well. I've harvested a few of these. So far they're not very hot yet, but I've been cooking with them. You can see some are already starting to turn red. And then in the back here, oh, and then we've got two poblanos. Now here is another stock flower that's going to seed. Now this is a single petal stock and this is a double petal stock. So when I collect seed, I would rather have seed from this plant than from this plant, but this one's setting seed and I'll just mark that this is from a single petal stock and then I'll mark that this is from a double petal stock. Now this is aster. This is the first time I've grown the, these flowers and they're really, really beautiful. I haven't harvested any to bring inside yet. Here's some more stock that's completely done for the year. Now here is a great example of, if you look on the back side of where my tomatoes are, you can just see how unruly they are and they need some serious attention. These are my Paul Robitson tomatoes. This is my biggest tomato yet of the year and it needs to be trellised up. So I'm gonna do that soon. Over here, we have our tomatillos and they have a ton of flowers on them. So we're hoping, hoping for a good crop this year. The bees love tomatillo flowers. That is the raised bed garden area. You know where we should go where I have not been since they were planted? I have not looked at the blueberries. Let's go look at the blueberries and see how those are doing. Along this whole ridge, we planted blueberries. These are pink lemonade blueberries. I don't see any fruit on there. I do see a couple berries on this one. Over here, we've got six more just blue blueberries. And that, my friend, looks like a blueberry. And there's another one. Let's try it. First blueberries of the year. Woo! That one, not ripe. Those have a couple more, whew, a couple more weeks before they're ready. But some of these plants are loaded for being the first year of growing. Now this one, broke this branch looks like broke in planting but they are just loaded with fruit so hopefully in a couple months we will have some blueberries i'm gonna try this one not good but the potential for it to be absolutely delicious is there. Just needs some time. So let's go walk to the orchard. I have not been in the orchard since last time you were and I were in the orchard, I think two months ago. <laughs> Life has been busy and I just haven't made it out there. But while I walk past this hose, I can't help myself since I'm walking past it. I'm gonna turn on the sprinkler. I'm trying to get this area to green up a little bit. So I'm gonna let the sprinkler go while we go to the orchard. The chickens are doing really well in their home. Josh and I this morning actually were talking about plans for their permanent situation. We're still trying to figure out the logistics of that and see exactly what we wanna do long-term for them, but they're doing great. I let them out sometimes and just run around toward the end of the day when, because they can't get into the main garden because it's fenced off. 
So for a couple hours a day, I let them kind of free range this area here. We've been harvesting strawberries from that garden there for fresh eating just here and there as they're ripe. The garlic has been harvested out of there, so there's nothing in there except for strawberries and some blueberry plants. Oh my goodness. Oh, I have not been out here at all. These, my friend, are plums. Oh my gosh. Some of them, it looks like, didn't get pollinated fully, but there are a ton. This tree is loaded. Do you see all that? Oh my gosh. I can't wait to share with Josh. He loves plums. I cannot wait to tell him about that. He's going to be thrilled. Oh my goodness, my friend. There are so many apples. Friend, these trees are incredibly loaded with fruit. Holy tamale. I don't know much about growing fruit. I didn't really do much to that trees at the last homestead. I just let them produce. Oh my goodness. What a blessing this is. Oh my goodness, friend. There's so many apples on these trees. We are going to have some serious fun harvesting. Oh my gosh. I'm going to make apple juice. I really want to see if I can find an apple press. I mean, there are a ton of apples on these trees. Now, there are a ton of pears on this tree over here. I didn't do any pruning or anything this winter. I had a baby. <laughs> pruning trees was not on the list of things to do. Now, these pears look weird. I don't know much about fruit. Can you tell me? That looks like there is something going on with these pears. I don't know for sure, but that looks like some sort of disease or some fungus or something like scab or something. I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some Googling. You know, this is not good. I don't think that that is a good sign. This is the same pear tree. Really bright orange on leaves does not does not scream. Oh yeah, there's one on this tree too. That doesn't look good to me. Now this tree, this was the pear tree we just looked at that I think there's like some sort of something happening with the fruit. This is the other one with those orange spots. They, this one does not have any fruit on it. I'm assuming that we've got some disease or something. Okay, so this apple tree, I don't see any fruit on this apple tree, but this is another plum tree. There's two plum trees in this orchard. This is the first one we were just at. This is the second one. And this one has more fruit on it than the first one. Now the previous owner, now this one got eaten by something, but a lot of them are not ripe yet. Now the previous owner said his plum trees, he's got two of them, that some years they have a bumper crop like this. And some years they don't produce anything. He said last year, or we were here last year, they didn't produce anything. This year they have a ton of stuff on it. Now I'm looking over here at this apple tree. This apple tree has a ton of fruit on it too. And here's another pear tree. I only see about five pears on this tree, or maybe 10. And these ones look a lot better. I'm not gonna touch anything because I touched that one tree that had that weird looking stuff on it. And if it's spreadable, I don't wanna touch anything. But this pear looks a lot better. Over here, I know that these are hazelnut trees. This one looks very sad. And that one looks healthy, but I don't see any hazelnuts on it. Over here, we've got more apple trees. There's fruit on this one. Oh no, that's a pear tree. That's a pear. And this apple tree has a ton of apples on it. So many, oh my goodness, friend. Look at all that. That's incredible. It has been, like I said, two months since I've been in here. This is a super treat to see all this stuff happening. There's a bunny. I don't know if you can see. she is. 
sweetheart. I'll leave you alone. I think there's a nest of bunnies in there because I see them. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. I think there's a family of bunnies that live somewhere around here because I see them eating the grass over here. This is a dead tree that Josh and I plan to take out. I don't know if it's totally dead, but it's kind of ugly. <laughs> we see it when we drive up. So we're gonna take that out. But over here is where, this is the last apple tree that has a ton of apples on it, which is awesome. It looks like only those two pear trees have those orange spots on them. So I'm gonna have to go inside and do some research on that. But if I remember correctly, one of my trees had that on it last year and one of you guys had given me like a warning signal, like remove any of the leaves that have that and burn it. I don't know if it's the same thing, but I need to look into it. I do have a chart. The previous owner left us a chart with all of the names of all these apple trees and fruit trees and stuff like that. So I just need to go inside and do some research and figure out which ones are storage apples and which ones are not. This is way more fruit than Josh and I can consume. And so I wanna think of creative ways to use it. And one of the ways I kinda of wanna use it is to either buy or rent a cider press in the United States, for my friends that are across the pond, we call apple cider, it's apple juice. It's freshly pressed apple juice that's not been filtered. And we call alcoholic cider, hard cider. So I want to make cider, so non-alcoholic fresh pressed apple juice. But I need to do some research. I feel like I've seen them on Facebook Marketplace and things like that. Like people buy them and then they don't end up using them. And I think a great way to use up a ton of that fruit and not let it just go bad on the tree would be to have a party, have a bunch of people come over, have everyone bring, or we purchase some gallon jugs and we press a ton of this fruit, we do it as a party, and then everyone goes home with some fresh pressed apple juice because that is a lot of apples. Just knowing from what I know from the previous homestead, and we I think we only had three apple trees that produced fruit ever, and they never produce that much fruit. I still have applesauce from those apple trees. Here is the previous owner's blueberry patch. Oh no, doesn't look like that, tr that bush has any blueberries on it, but this one has a ton. Let's try this. There are six blueberry plants in here and it looks like this year only three of them have fruit on them. Ooh. That is delicious. I want to see if I can find another one. That is a really good blueberry. That is so good. Well, friend, thank you for hanging out with me today as we did a garden tour this year. Garden. I am grateful for any little snippet that comes out of the garden because I didn't even know if we were going to have this garden done in time in order for garden season. So it's just a huge blessing that anything and everything that's coming out, I'm considering it a win. And so it's just been a great, great year so far. And I just really appreciate the fact that you take time out of your day to spend time with me. I hope your gardens are being productive. I hope you are having a great summer with family and friends. And if you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy it between now and my next upload. I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.